We at St. Basil's Parish regard the love of God to be the foundation of all life and ministry. We believe in the ever-present love of God as witnessed through Christ and empowered by the Holy Spirit. We believe that each person is loved by God and is of sacred worth. Therefore, through God's grace, we welcome all persons to our parish. We express God's hospitality by creating a safe, healing, accessible, and transforming place for all to enter. Further, we acknowledge with gratitude and respect that we gather here on the unceded and unsurrendered territory of the Algonquin Nation, whose presence here reaches back to time immemorial. We honor their long history of welcoming many nations to this beautiful territory, and we uphold and uplift the voice and values of our host nation. Even though Jesus was without sin, nevertheless, he joined sinners and was baptized by John the Baptist. Jesus joins us now as we meet to celebrate the Eucharist in his name. Let us draw near to him who is the messenger of the Father's love and mercy. The Mass intention for reconciliation between Indigenous people and the Church for Saturday, January, Saturday, January 8th. Our presider today is Father Pastor Darrell Winkler. Please stand. We've gathered this afternoon in the name of the Father, Ojinakazawin Weosamund, and of the Son, Gewewisanind, and of the Holy Spirit, Gewinishinid Manido, Megin. Amen. We come together as brothers and sisters in the Lord. Let us, be, we have thanks for, please begin. Thank you for Kateri for being with us today and sharing uh, their, uh, sharing with all of us. All of us get to enjoy this liturgy which honors uh, indigenous spiritual traditions and helps us to become uh, more and more reconciled with one another. And we give thanks for this. Um, today we're going to be celebrating with two sisters uh, who will renew their temporary vows, sisters with the Holy Cross congregation. And they're here with their uh, mentor uh, superior, uh, Sister Jean, and uh, then all of us together celebrating and remembering the baptism of the Lord. So we come together as brothers and sisters in the Lord, and we begin so by calling to mind our need for purification, so that the time that we are gathered here, this will be a time where all the barriers that can separate us are lowered, a time when there is nothing that prevents us from being together in the best way as a community of people who want to celebrate the love of God in their lives and, and, and our love for one another. Oh, great 
Let us now join Christians around the world in giving God glory.
son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who, when Christ had baptized in the river Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved son, Grant that your children by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well pleasing to you. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading, a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth the justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations. To open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. The word of the Lord. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Lord God, how great you are, both in majesty and glory. Your chariot, you 
walk on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers, and the flashing fire your servants. Oh, bless the Lord, O my soul. How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you have made them all. The rich earth is full of your riches. There is the sea vast and wide. With its moving swarms past counting. Living things great and small. Second reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with the power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 John said, He who is to come is mightier than I. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, 
You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Today, we um, remember the baptism of Jesus at the beginning of the new year. The baptism of Jesus, we remember, signals the beginning of his ministry. It's like the inauguration of his ministry that he begins. And um, so I've been looking at the commentaries to see what they say, like I do try to do every week. I have an office full of biblical commentaries. And when I look at this passage and see what other scripture scholars have had to say about this passage, there seems to be um, concern. Uh, what they mention is that there was concern in the early church uh, because there was a kind of uh, embarrassment, can I say, something like that, that Jesus was baptized. Because as you know, baptism is to erase sin. But why would Jesus need to be baptized if he was sinless? So there were ways of trying to think how to, what, what does this baptism mean if it's not for, if Jesus didn't need conversion, if he didn't need to turn around and modify his ways of living his life, what was the purpose of his baptism? And so I think there are three common points. If you read the commentaries, they come up with about three different suggestions, and I hope I remember all three of them. The first one was that the baptism was inauguration. It was the opening. It was the ceremony to begin his ministry. It was the opening, something sacred, a ceremony that would begin his ministry. So that was the, that's the first kind of thinking that scripture scholars have, that this baptism marks the beginning the inauguration, and also the confirmation of Jesus being the Messiah. The second reason may be this. We don't know for sure. Uh, we do our best to pray about it and wonder. But the second reason may be this, that Jesus wanted to identify with us, that he would be a part of us. And as the people, it says, all over the Jordan, all over Judea, were coming forward, he joins to be a part of us. He's with us. And it's to show us that he is human like we are. 100% human, human. And so he does what everyone is called to do, to receive a baptism which calls us to live a new life, to seek to live uh, life in the best way that we can, and also to prepare us for our own mission, for the mission of doing good work, reaching out, helping others. Don't remember what the third one is now, but that's okay. There is, I don't know, in the 70s, there was um, a series of, um, it was a movie, a very long movie that they would show, I remember as a child, over the course of Lent, called Jesus of Nazareth. The director was Zeffirelli. And that movie did a lot to form my own thinking about who Jesus was and what he was like. And I don't know if you know that film that I'm talking about. But there is a scene in there where Michael York, the actor Michael, is playing John the Baptist. And he, you know, he's taking water and pours it over people's heads. He's pouring it. And the people are in a lineup coming to receive the baptism of John the Baptist. And he reaches down and he pours water over their head. And then, they, and then the next person in line comes up. And then as he's reaching down to pour water, there's Jesus in the lineup, just like everybody else, standing in line to receive the baptism. And there he says, I'm not, why, I'm not worthy to untie the, your sandals. Why are you needing this? Why do you need this baptism? And we're trying to decide for ourselves. But what we see in this baptism is the heavens breaking open and a dove coming down. 
and saying to Jesus, you are my beloved. I'm so pleased with you. I'm so delighted with you and everything that you do. And because he is the son of God and he's following the path that the Lord, that the father wants for him. And so because he's the son of God, we see in the opening prayer to this today, it says we're also sons of God and daughters of God. Therefore, God also says to us, you are my beloved. I love you. And for baptism, what it means to me when we celebrate this feast, it's an opportunity for me to reflect in my life on the things in my life and for all of us. What are the moments that I have been told, you are my beloved daughter, you're my beloved son, I'm so pleased with you, I love you, infinitely, with, without condition. And I look over the course of my life and there's so many moments where I felt that kind of love. It started with my parents. You know, my, my, my mother and my father saying, we love you so much. And, and then hearing it again from other family members, my grandmother. And, you know, we've all received these messages of God's love for us being spoken through the people we love. And if we didn't have a family, then what about through our friends who tell us, you know, to show us in a thousand ways how much we're loved and how much we are important to people in this world. That's what this baptism means to me. It means that God loves me and calls me his son. He calls us his sons and his daughters and the love that he shares for us, we can see in our lives. What is my experience telling me? How have I experienced it? What are the specific moments in my life when I have felt something very powerful? Such a feeling of love and overwhelming love. You know, and all of us, let's hope, have experienced it. And that's a part of the growth, spiritual growth, for many of us, is becoming aware of that love in our lives. When, and it requires reflection. When have I thought about it? How have I experienced God's love in my life? And how do I share that love with others? That's our mission. That's the mission of all, every Christian, to share this love with others in many different forms, many different ways. For some of us, we're called to priesthood and to share our ministry with the, ministry with the people of God. Others are called to be deacons. Some are called to be good mothers and good fathers, raising up healthy and strong children. Some of us are called to, to be lawyers and doctors and doing our best to fulfill our vocation. Some of us are called to be different things. But most importantly, we're called to share this love and to show it in different ways to others. Now, um, we have two sisters. They have been professed with the community, the Congregation of Holy Cross, with the Sisters of Holy Cross. They're renewing their vows today. They're making a commitment because they have felt the love of God in their own lives. They've, they're beloved daughters. They know this. And they're taking this love and they're sharing it. Right now, they're in the process of education, learning how to be good at whatever they do. And they've received the support of their community to lead lives that help them to minister to the people around them, to share their love with others through teaching, through international development. And I mean, I forget what they're all, they're, they've been studying here and working hard and doing exams and writing papers and all of it will bear good fruit, I'm sure of this. So I'm gonna call them to come forward with Sister Jean and allow them to um, renew their vows within our own community. Thank you. 
after the vow. In the name of God, the Creator, Jesus, the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, the Sanctifier. Amen. To answer the call of God, who invites me to leave the consecration of my baptism in religious life, I, Catherine Yampa, vow until January 20, 2023, to live chaste, poor, and obedient according to the constitutions of the Congregation of the Sisters of Holy Cross represented here by Sister Jean Goulet. I rely on the strength of the Holy Spirit and on the help of Mary, Mother of Sorrows, to remain faithful to putting on Jesus Christ each day, to work with zeal for the mission of the Church in union of heart and effort with my sisters in Holy Cross. In witness thereof, I sign the present act of profession in St. Basil's Church, the eighth day of January, 2022. In the name of God, the Creator, Jesus, the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, the Sanctifier. Amen. To answer the call of God who invites me to leave the consecration of my baptism in religious life, I, Sizam Sisuma, vow until January 20th, 2023 to live chaste, poor, and obedient according to the constitution of the Congregation of the Sisters of Holy Cross, represented here by Sister Jean Goulet. I rely on the strength of the Holy Spirit and on the help of Mary, Mother of Soul, to remain faithful to putting on Jesus Christ each day, to work with zeal for the mission of the Church, in union of heart and effort with my sisters in Holy Cross. In witness thereof, I sign the present act of profession in St. Basil Church, the eighth day of January, 2022. Sisters Catherine and Suzanne, I joyfully accept your renewal of vows on behalf of the Congregation of the Sisters of Holy Cross. This blanket, by the way, was a gift to Cattery Native Ministry from uh, Archbishop Marcel Gervais. I don't know when, a long time ago. Anyways, there you have it. We're going to come and sign the documents above.
God, our creator, your spirit is at work in our world. Hear the prayers we now bring before you. For the church, that we may grow in faith according to the grace of our baptism through study, service, and communion, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of speaking out, that we may be encouraged in this synod journey to speak with courage and Parisia, integrating freedom, truth, and love, we pray. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the world, that the grace of God helps them to recognize the sacredness of the earth around them and to grow deeper in their respect and care for their common home, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For prayer that our baptism in Christ Jesus speak boldly of God's compassion within the church and thus help us to compassionately compassionately bridge all strained relationships, we pray. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations, that they may resolve their conflicts by seeking justice and peace, we pray. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For Kateri Native Ministry, and their work for reconciliation in the Archdiocese of Ottawa, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For people who suffer depression and loneliness in these winter months, may we spark love and connection for those who feel most alone and those threatened by fear, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the basics of life for people in need, that we may work diligently for those without clean water, adequate education, and sufficient health care, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic and for all those who try to alleviate the suffering it causes, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those among us who are sick, we pray especially for Shania Nelson of Cattery Native Ministry, John Dorner, Marie Smith, Amanda Manette, Rita McLean, Namish, Laura and Francis Mathot, Roger Heath, Father Peter Bisson, Aidan Warswick, Shirley Armstrong, and Laura Dubay, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whom we love and who have died, We remember especially Billy Baxter, Kay Rehill, Jane Knox, Danny Salama, Ron Halstead, and all who have died from the coronavirus, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-loving God, by the gift of baptism, we belong to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our brother. Bless us with peace and a renewed commitment to living our baptismal call. We ask this through Christ our Lord. When Jesus comes to be baptized, he leaves the hidden years behind. The years of safety and of peace to bear the sins of human Spirit of the Lord comes down, anoints the Christ to suffer, bring to preach the word, to free the bound, and to the is bruised, he will not break, but 
till the wound in justice dealt, and out of death his triumph made. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the heart. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan, you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven, we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us. And by the spirits descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ, your servant, has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth. And before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is he who comes in the Lord's name. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God. You who love the human race and you who always walk with us on the journey of life, Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to make holy these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the last supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, 
our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis, our Pope, and Marcel, our Bishop, the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ. We remember especially Billy Baxter and Brian Morey, jean Vier Leonard, Kay Rehill, Rick O'Reilly, Danny Salama, Ron Halstead, and all those who have died from the coronavirus. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection. Give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you in eternity. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and saints, with St. Joseph, the husband of Mary, with St. Cattery, St. Basil, and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, so we all have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Oh, Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life.
shall come to me, and I will give them rest. I am the bread of life, all who eat this bread. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in birth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. We just have two or three announcements. Our next Conversations for Our Times webinar series will take place this Sunday, January 9th at 2.30 p.m. This event will feature Dr. Lorraine St. Marie, who will share with us her idea and insights about the importance of listening in the synodal process. For further information, please see the bulletin, the parish website, and the parish Facebook page. The group from the Handicraft Holy Land Christians who were planning to bring religious pieces made by families in Bethlehem to our parish will not be coming this weekend due to COVID. They will reschedule at a later date. Donation envelopes are now available in the narthex. Please pick up your box. If you don't have a box of donation envelopes but wish to have one, please contact the parish office. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Eucharist is ended. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another.